I have returned from centuries of slumber, and now Solutions Architect Associate will burn! So what's poppin' everyone? So in this video, I have an interesting thing to cover today. So I, I've, I was uh, perusing the AWS certifications subreddit, like I sometimes do, um, and I, I found an interesting article. It was called something like, uh, AWS Solutions Architect Associates make $150,000 a year, so why aren't people begging me for jobs? Or maybe it was like $130,000 a year? So I'm gonna take a look at the article that that Reddit thread was going through, and I'm gonna compare it to some other data on Solutions Architect Associates. So this is an important topic to cover because many people want to get these AWS certifications because they want to make money. It's it's kind of obvious, right? However, <laughs> you can't make. There's a limit to how much you, money you can make based on only having an AWS certification, and it requires a lot more effort and knowledge and experience to get more than only having the certification alone. And oftentimes, only having the certification alone, it'll be difficult to find a job. It might get you a foot in the door, but we'll see. So if you don't know who I am, I am Daniel Clark. I am a software engineer currently, and I have about six AWS certifications. So I feel like I'm qualified to talk about salaries of these kind of people who have these certifications and stuff like that. Anyways, here was the specific Reddit thread I was re referencing. So people, why aren't tech giants begging me to work for them? And then we have this link to Global Knowledge. And I have never heard of Global Knowledge before, by the way. I'm not sponsored by them. I don't even know anything about them, honestly. Except that they have an article about top paying certifications. So let's take a look at that. All right, so here we are at the article, and it thinks I'm Canadian, which I'm not, as you can see by the Florida shirt. But um, so, 15 top-paying IT certifications. So this is interesting. Like, a lot of people want to want to get certifications. Like, one of my friends is trying to get like the Cisco network certif certification because he wants to do like networking and stuff like that. But look at look at the look at the highest-paying one: $175,000 to get this Google Certified Professional Cloud Architect. So now I don't know about you, but I don't know many that many companies that use Google Cloud. And sure it's I'm sure it like some companies use it, but I can't see a reason why it it, it would be more than AWS when you know like the percentages wise, like 30% use AWS while like five to ten percent use Google Cloud. So that that automatically throws me off and it makes me wonder where they're getting these statistics. And I looked at this article and I do not see anywhere stating where they get the, oh, okay, there we go, methodology. So where do they get it? From 2020 IT skills and salary survey. So they salaried um, some people in the United States based on this. So I'm wondering where in the United States they're surveying? Because if they're surveying like only people in Silicon Valley that make this much money, then yeah, I guess that makes sense because people in Silicon Valley kind of make a lot of money. but. So, and they also saw more turnover than most, as seven new certifications cracked to top 15, which makes sense. But they don't really um, kind of give you more details. Like, um, they said they have information on age and job role, and we'll look at that based on the Solutions Architect Associate and maybe the other AWS one, because I'm the most familiar with that one, those certifications. But uh, let's see, to qualify our list, must have at least 70 US survey responses to be considered statistically valid. So they might have like 71 people that <laughs> went and went to this survey. And then looking, I don't like not, I haven't taken any training from this website, but looking at their top here, they have training. So that's how they could potentially be biased because they want to train you. So one good way to train you is to tell you, hey, people, earn millions of dollars taking these certifications, so you should get them too. <laughs> Anyways, let's look at this Solutions Architect Associate one. So number two, so we can see, well, number one, we can see that, at, that you can see the average certifications. They have 3.8, they're 38.9 years old, which is, I guess, middle, middle of the pack. Cloud Architect, most likely role. And then it's most likely, this is really interesting. So for Google, the most it's most likely paired with a solutions architect associate. That that's kind of that's kind of put in my brain like you either are Google only or AWS only. Like most of the time, most people aren't going to be doing both cuz like why would you do both if you have one? It, it just doesn't make sense to me. But anyways, average salary $149,000 and 446. 
So, only the associate. This, this is not the professional or anything. The average is 5.8 certifications. So it's basically how many certifications I have. They're 41.4 years old, and I don't know about you, but do I look that old? <laughs> I don't <laughs> I mean, my hair is kind of like, I don't know. Maybe I'm 41 years old. OK, I'm 41. Cloud architect most likely job role. OK, I mean, maybe. I could see that. Maybe they're a cloud architect for like AWS or something, AWS directly. And once again, most likely paired. OK, so what does it say? Three out of four cloud architects have earned one of the top two certifications on this list. Oh my god. You have to you ha basically saying you have to have the certification to be a cloud ar architect, which is crazy. So reading more into this, it says the cloud certified cloud practitioner certification is a prerequisite. And no, it is not a prerequisite. No. This I wouldn't even like if if this people this company training company is saying you need to take the the cloud practitioner practitioner as well. To, t to even get the certification, that's a, a complete lie. They're just telling you that so because they want you to take their course, to take their training. So you have to take both their courses, spend more money on this platform. Don't do it. If you want to just get the Solutions Architect Associate, I have a video on it. And you can just do that and study for it, and read FAQs and stuff like that. You don't need to pay anything. Also, in fact, you don't even need what they recommend a year of hand on. Well, AWS recommends a year of hand on experience. Like, I, I got it like with six months AWS certified or AWS experience. So, you don't need a year. And it says, oh, it's a, it's a prerequisite for a solution architect professional. Well, yeah, no, it's not a prerequisite. It probably is recommended, but no, you don't need it. So, you can, you can go ahead and take that now. You probably won't pass if you don't have this solution architect. But, you can take it, and you can pass without it. All right, and then we'll look at the, the, the I guess, information. 40 years old and cloud architect, blah, blah, blah. And then look at this. Take the next steps. Oh, I want to make $150,000. I know what I got to do. I got to follow the certification prep guide, how to be an AWS certified architect. Let's download it now. I don't want to download this. Uh, Go.globalknowledge.com. Hmm. View more details and recommended course for this certification. Let's see. Oh, learn how to design available systems. Ooh, wow, ooh, how much does this cost? It, don't, it doesn't even say the price. Maybe I'm not looking in the right plot spot. Oh, it's because it's. I have to go to a training path. So I guess the training path would be, there's traditional and then accelerated. So maybe I want to get it done quick. So let's, let's look at this accelerator thing. How much is it? Oh my God! Five thousand one hundred and ninety-five CAD Canadian dollars. I don't know how that converts to U.S. dollars, but I don't think the conversion is too high. So that's a lot of money for one course. <laughs> but I mean, you make one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, right? So <laughs> you know, you won't make that just after taking this course. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. I'm sorry. All right, now let's look at the next one on the list. Cloud practitioner exam. So average salary, $131,000. This is what they claim, not what I'm saying. I, I think it would be a lot less if this is the only certification you have. I'm just saying that here. But, <laughs> and you don't know anything else, basically. I mean, if you have experience, sure, you might be able to earn this. But let's let's say this is all you have. And the average, this is the average salary. And I, if you look at like the average salary of like software engineers, it's going to be, of course, way lower than this. And maybe if you look at the average salary of like all these roles individually, it's going to be all lower than this. So it makes me think where you get this number from. <laughs> but yeah, I guess we, we saw that. It's all a complete lie. And you have to be 43 years old, or I guess this is the average. Five, wait, 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 wait. Five certifications on average. What? This is this is the basic, the most basic certification. You're saying that the, the most basic certification they, the average certification holder has five certifications. That, that's a lot to ask right there. It's, it's already a lot for me to get go and take six. Like, I'm exhausted. And just looking at one of my other videos, so this is um, how to get AWS Cloud Practitioner in one day. So this person got it in three days of study and took one to two hours every day of studying, which which is kind of reasonable. And you don't want to study, like, too much or you'll... But anyways, they're saying this other company is getting paid $131,000. And if you get the certification three days, you can get this easy. That That's such an unreasonable claim. 
Otherwise, everyone would be making this. Like, if it's so easy to get the certification, like three days, that's that's like child's play. Like everyone would do this then. So no, this is just not right. So they also had something similar in 2019. So top paying AWS certification and salary and stuff like that. So this this article right here is what you find when you Google um, AWS certification salary or like solutions architect associate salary. This article is what you find. So they're they're this is just not right. How do they? I don't know um, how they're getting to like the number one pick on Google search, like their search engine optimization is great. To have them display $130,000 for Solution Archite uh, Solutions Architect Associates, I, I should just start saying SAA, because it's too much to say. But they're, they're advertising such a crazy amount for the average salary of this. And of course, professional salary. Of I mean, it makes sense, professional salary would be more. I mean, it still seems a bit high though, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm not one to say. I don't have the solution architect a pro professional quite yet. And then if we look at the other salaries as well, they all are about 130K for the associate levels. I mean, I guess it makes sense, even though like solution architect associate is kind of easier, I would say, than these other ones. And yet they're kind of making more, or they're kind of making a little bit less, but we'll ignore that. And DevOps engineer, 137. Okay, it's it's more. And this this is what like you'll find when you Google it. Like this right here. And I just want to say, like, this isn't right that they're just kind of like using this like uh, bad statistics because they're not really giving you like a good resource on saying where they got these statistics from. They're just saying, oh, it was from a survey, blah blah blah, a survey I found in a dumpster, <laughs> and they just want you to sell you their training courses and subscriptions and deliveries and locations and stuff like that. It's just not worth it, I would say. Like the $5,000 or something they're trying to sell for some of these courses. All right, so I, I did more research and I, this looks like a more reasonable salary for Solutions Architect Associate, maybe 130K, 13K, and maybe like 99K. These, these, look, like, these look like more more reasonable numbers, like 93K for a software engineer, so like solution architect, maybe 130. Okay, so this is probably where they got this number from. There's the 130k. Um, so look at that. You can see. I mean, maybe, maybe they do. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't have those statistics, but it. But see, average salary 118k. Maybe maybe more reasonable than the 130k or 150k, whatever they were showing before. And to show you maybe even a better um, statistic set. I went to Glassdoor, which is probably the most reputable of the websites I've been to and shown you today. So 83, 82K. This is probably the most accurate here, honestly. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise, because if it's more reputable than Glassdoor, maybe, might, maybe you can trust it. If, if they have like a good um, set of like data on how they got this data. But you can see here, most of them are making around 82K. There are some that make 180K. And there's some making even 60K. Like, there's a good amount making 60, 70K here. So, and you can see all here the companies that are hiring for it. And you can see, like, because the, the, how they get their data is people report that they're making this much data at, like, um, Akami or Amazon or something like that, Trinity. And from there, they get this data. So that's, that's a more reasonable estim estimation. And, of course, it has, like, a range and average and stuff like that. So I would trust this. 82K over the 150K any day of the week. Anyways, I hope you liked this video and hoped it showed you some insight on some of these insane salary ranges that some of these companies are offering. Like, I remember like looking a couple months ago, like it showed that the Solutions Architect Associate earned more than the professional. Like, uh, someone earned more having the associate than the professional, which didn't make any sense to me. It might have been like the same knowledge whatever website i was on before global knowledge don't trust that website just because it's the first thing in google that's what i've learned today just because it's first thing in google doesn't mean it's right anyways i hope you liked it if you did hit that subscribe button and i'll talk to you later peace